Hey, okay. Hello folks, welcome to Me Made May Day 11. It's Monday, beautiful sunny day here in Perth, Australia. I'm gonna try and be quick because I've got to get stuff to the post. So these are all the parcels um, so far from the sale, which I promised would go out today. So they're gonna be on their way very shortly as soon as I've done this. Um, there is still more on the website. I will get some more, like there's heaps more stuff that I need to put up there. Um, so I'm hoping to have more things ready for next weekend, um, if you're interested in all that stuff. But I'm technically here for Me Made May to tell you about my outfit today. The challenge is every day in May. Um, so these are the red pants I was talking about earlier that I was going to finish. They are McCall 7726. Uh, I've never made this pattern before, so I'm pretty happy with this as a first go. I'll stand back and show you. Um, yeah, actually you can't even see the bottom of my legs because I'm wearing boots, but they're sort of just above ankle length. Um, yeah, could be better on the back, I reckon. Um, I don't know, is it better to see the back from here? I don't know. I'm not real fond of these tucks. I don't think they're very flattering. I mean, mind you, I've got one hell of a thick jumper tucked into them right now. Um, yeah, so quick review. I made a size 10. Um, my measurements will be in the description box below if you're sewing these pants. Um, just as a note though, I don't use a full seam allowance. I only use a one centimeter seam allowance. One day I will teach myself to use a bigger seam allowance. I think it would make my life a whole lot easier when it comes to putting these things together. But because I started off in lingerie and lingerie has a six mil seam allowance, one centimeter seems huge to me. <laughs> but yeah, changes I've made, I did end up taking in the inside leg um, from sort of just below the crutch all the way down, starting at zero to, um, two and a half centimeters at the bottom in from the original seam. So including the seam allowance, three and a half centimeters at the bottom to get a, the tapered look that I wanted. Um, did I change anything else? Oh yeah, I shortened the inside of the pocket bags. Um, Cause the original, where is it? I have a bit around here somewhere still. Oh, there they are. Here's the bit I cut off, which would have sat down there. So the original pocket bag finishes all the way down here, which means like if I'd have put something in my pocket and it would have been thick on that part of my thigh. I mean, you could see the inside of the pocket bag as it was. And they don't go in very far. Like if I'm putting my hands in there, that's as far as I can go. So I have to go down. And I mean, with the shortened, plenty, plenty big enough. They would have been like down here. So anything I put in my pockets would have been right on the top of my thigh. I'm cool. Anyway, so yeah, I cut that off and shortened it because it didn't look great. Um, but yeah, those are the only changes that I made. I put, I followed instructions and I put the zip together according to the instructions. I sat up last night while watching um, Sean's live feed for kittenish behavior and just hanging out. And I put the seam in according to the instructions and I went, yeah, look, I really don't like that. So I sat there and I puzzled it and I unpicked it and I thought I could do this. And I put it together and I was like, no, that doesn't work. So I tried three times. Um, the way that they've done it is with these pattern paper pieces, the way that it's constructed is the only way that you can do it. But the thing that bothers me, I mean, one in a paper bag top, um, there, there's no interfacing, which is... I guess kind of normal it's not really a lot of way you could do it so it's not stiff it does roll over a lot because um, it's very high up I mean I'm short torso that's my rib cage so every time my you know it just kind of rolls down um, which wouldn't be a problem except for the fact there's no way you're gonna be able to see that but half of the zip is exposed um, so that sits on your skin if I wasn't wearing something tucked in um, like the facing doesn't fold, it folds over on this side, but not on that side. I don't like that. Um, probably one of the main reasons why I wanted to make these pants is because, like I do a paper bag, 
like loungewear pant for my range. And I made that pattern. And when I did like the facings and like how I finished this top half, um, I, the way that I did it, like I spent a lot of time trying to figure it out because I didn't want there to be too much bulk because inside every pleat, um, you have the facing and the outside. So every sort of pleat or tuck or gather becomes four layers of fabric. So it becomes quite thick. And I did it so that only the outside was pleated and tucked and then the facing was big enough to fit over these pieces and then it shrunk in in the middle and it came sort of right down. Um, which was difficult to sew in. This is much easier to sew in, um, but it is four layers of fabric, whereas that would have, on the tucks was only two layers of fabric. Um, and yeah, the way that the fly is done on this, I think there could be a better way. I also, yeah, it's just, I want to find the perfect way to do this because like in a normal pair of pants, you know, or a skirt or whatever, you put on a waistband or you reinforce it and put on a facing. So the waistband is interfaced and the facing's interfaced and, you know, it's strong and structured and all the rest of it. Whereas on these, you can't because you're trying to make that soft sort of business on top. And you want it to be covered on the inside, like finished, so it looks nice. Um, but not too bulky because there's all these gathers. Anyway, it's a puzzle. It's a puzzle. Just... Just the kinds of things that keep me amused. I'm supposed to be being quick at this. Anyway, so that's the Cole's paper bag pants. Um, the top is the same as the top I wore yesterday, but a different fabric. Did I wear? No, it wasn't yesterday. When I wore the blue sort of ombre denim -y look number with the um, black flock leopard print um, top and skirt, it's the same pattern as that, which is this one. This is Quick Sew 1640. Um, it's the top half of that dress, and I just put cuffs on it. This is possibly the most worn thing in my wardrobe, like ever, because it's so warm. It's made out of um, minky fleece. Um, you know, like like children's blankets, like super, super polyester, super, super fluffy, um, really easy to wash, really easy to clean, um, feels really nice, and yeah, it's, it's really, really warm. Um, so I love it. it. The fabric just came from Spotlight. It is hard to get it in, like, fashion colours, so I was so happy to get this blue, because I love this blue. Um, yeah, I also put a rib band on the bottom, so... It's only the rib band, not all the minky that's hiding underneath there. Um, yeah, dolman, grown on sleeve, takes like two minutes to make. Um, really do want to make myself some more, um, like minky, warm, warm things, because I'm trying not to have the heating on um, while I work from home at, in this current climate, because it's really expensive and I don't want to spend too much money. Um, so yes, I'm trying to keep myself warm. So yay, with my bow. I call this look um, Spoilt Royal Toddler. What do you reckon? <laughs> I've got to keep myself amused somehow. Anyway, I'm off to the post office. Yeah, have a lovely Monday. Bye.